Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today we're going to show you how to jig up some, some baits we call greenies, you might call them threadfin herring, with some sabiki rigs. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. We're out here, we're gonna start the morning off sabiking, sabiking, jigging up some bait to go fishing with. So, good news right off the bat. I'm gonna give you some tips to do better at sabiking up baits. Tips that have nothing to do with your fishing ability, just about being prepared. First off, have quality sabiki rigs. I've made this mistake before, I thought it was just a sabiki rig, dumb baits right they don't care i've gotten cheap rigs and they haven't caught fish i'll be right next to people on either side of me catching fish i'm marking you know bait but nothing so i'm going to put some links to some to some sabiki rigs that i like to use that i found good uh, some of the common characteristics are they have light line um, fluorocarbon line even and they have real um, fish skins as part of them uh, things like that really help them to, to just do better. I guess it has some scent, stuff like that. Thing number two, when you're going to sabiki up bait, have yourself a bucket, okay? Maybe a couple buckets for each guy. Um, a lot of times the guy's at the front of the boat and it's kind of a pain to sabiki up bait and walk to the back or they fall to the ground and then they sit on the deck for a while and they start to die and it's bad for them. If you have a bucket, you can you know catch yourself a dozen of these greenies Throw them in your bucket, you know, they'll do fine. And then every now and then just dump the bucket. Or like if I'm driving the boat, I'll just run up, grab the bucket, and dump it. So what I'm doing is just trying to keep him on the spot. Got a lot of boats around. Got a current coming out. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I saw he caught a Spanish mackerel. That's cool. Um, and just keep him on the bait. We can get bait. We can go fish, you know. His job, um, obviously, is catching bait. It doesn't take a whole lot of work here. These greenies seem pretty hungry. I mean, you know, you can jig it a little, but pretty much you kind of go down, and they, as it's going down, I think they hit it, you feel them bite, and you reel up. And uh, the main thing for him that's important is to watch those little sabikis that are hanging off the line, because they could start breaking. You know, a big fish hits it, or a Spanish on with sharp teeth will cut it off. And you're like, man, I'm not catching very many bait. And then you look and you only got one hook left. So you need to pay attention to that. That's a, that's a big one. In regards to sabiki rods, you know, they make rods specifically for sabiki rigs. And it's basically like a hollow tube and your line reels up in it. And the idea is, you know, these little six hooks aren't flailing around, you know, when you're driving or, you know, doing other fishing. So they don't get tangled great idea I personally don't like them I've never had good success with them they were a pain to rig up and they just didn't feel very smooth they caused me more trouble than it was worth so if you like them good for you but I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend for greenies just a good spinning rod that allows you to cast it still got a little bit of strength but it's just pretty simple to use now a lot of these tips would apply if you're going for bigger blue runners except for you know, using a rod. I'd have a good strong rod, maybe a conventional rod, because with blue runners, I'm not as concerned with casting as I am just dropping it down and hauling these big baits up. Now, we're gonna get into some technique. As far as technique goes, the key we find with greenies and most other fish is to keep it moving, okay? Now, you can jig it up and down, or you can just cast it out, let it drop, and then reel it back up, and you can let it drop down, you can cast it out and reel it up, and they'll hit it that way. It's pretty simple. I'll find as the captain, you know, I'm just kind of searching. And when I mark them, you know, that's when we'll drop it down. Other baits like cigar minnows, you might see up on the surface, pop in, and you can cast into them. That works too. But greenies, we find them on structure. Usually like a sunken wreck or at like the tip of our jetties where the rocks go down to the water. Both of those are what holds the bait. Now, there's probably going to be a lot of boats there, okay? Other boats, you know, other captains trying to get their bait, which is fine. Uh, make sure you don't run into anyone and watch out for them. 
someone's not paying attention, they could run into you. A lot of times, if we're at the jetties, you know, the current will be moving, either the tide will be going out, the tide will be going in. So sometimes you think you're staying in the same spot. Maybe you're at the front of this pack of boats catching baits, but you're actually slowly still drifting off. So pay attention to your spot on the GPS. You, know, you may need to keep the boat in gear or bump it up every now and then. All right, caught bait. Wasn't too bad, right? Uh-oh. I guess it's probably we're looking live if we grabbed it all time. Yeah, didn't take us too long. We got there early, got on the spot. Now it's time to go catch some fish. So bait wasn't too bad to get. No, nah, bait was good today. See like the spinners a lot more for the uh, yeah, yeah. jig and bait. Yeah, about a three ounce. I was using one ounce, and I think the current was so strong it wasn't sinking enough. Okay. So when that three ounce weight and spinner, and I was able to pull it farther, and as it was sinking, I could just feel it. I'm feeling it. Must have caught, what, four or five, uh, or three or four Spanish mackerel. Yeah. It's probably be a good place to troll for Spanish mackerel. Yeah, ain't got nothing else to do. Come out here with some spoons, and I bet you'll rip them up. Yep. I got a ledge just inside of a uh, nine mile we can, we can go to. You ready? Okay guys, got bait. Let's see if we can catch some fish now. Alrighty guys, first fish of the day. We're bringing in our baits. You may get a gap. Yeah. Yeah. So we were trying to leave the spot, and uh, as soon as we tried to leave, like reeling in the bait to catch the fish. Yeah, I got it. I felt him hit it, so I dropped back on him, boom, 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 and he hit it. Bought funny, but it, I think the line, the wire line was kind of with a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, but I wasn't thought it was a king, I thought it was a shark or something. Yeah. But one bite, one catch. No more strikes, so we're going to another one. Right. Well, it's a little slow today. Water's super clear. We just now got a ripple. It was like dead slick. Just got a ripple. Clear water, lots of bait. All good sign. The only thing that could hurt us is actually it being too calm and too clear. I don't know if that's the case. We've had one fish. It's really clear where I can see your line and terminal tackle. I feel like they're less or they're more skittish and it's harder to get a bite. Usually a little chop on the water, a little dirtiness kind of hides your terminal tackle. Well guys, hope you enjoyed the video today. Hope you learned a thing or two about jigging up, greenies as we call them. Uh, a little slow on the kingfish bite, a little slow on the shark bite. Um, I guess, I don't know, something with the storms, the pressure, the clear water, maybe just a different body of water moved them out. You know, it is, it is what it is sometimes. Can't, uh, can't slam all the time. But thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.